So this Photoshop masking tutorial is not about perfection. It's about getting a quick concept done so that you can present your idea and focus on what the layout looks out so you can get approvals, yes, no, all those happy glad revisions that clients and art directors and people um, like to put you through. If you've ever worked for a paying client or for an art director or creative director, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Those of you watching this tutorial who have never done Photoshop for a living have no idea what I'm talking about. For you guys, it's okay to spend 10 or 20 hours on an image or a piece of artwork. Uh, when you're working in the advertising or creative services industry, not okay to do that, especially not when it's just to get an idea out that might be rejected. They might tell you that they have a completely different direction or new images or photography for you. And if you've spent even five hours on this, three hours on it, it's too long. It is entirely too long just to get it out of the way. So I'm going to help you avoid that by showing you how to do this quickly um, and easily so that you can go ahead and you can move on to the next process in your work or you can move on to um, the next concept that you have to produce. Um, select your quick selection tool and you're going to want to select as much of the actual model and a little bit of the surrounding area as you can, but you want to keep it um, as close and tight as possible and once you've done that you're going to want to select uh, refine edge and move into the refine edge tool some notes on uh, working with the click uh, the quick selection tool I prefer to have auto enhance selected just because I tend to get better selections and better results with that you also are going to want to make sure that you have a soft brush um, going for that so make sure that all of those things are set up properly when you're working with the quick selection tool. As for the refine edge tool, um, there are a couple of different sliders here. There's smooth, feather, contrast, shift edge, um, and there's smart radius. We're going to be focusing on radius, contrast, and shift edge. And we're also going to focus on decontaminate colors. For our purposes, we're not going to use feather and smooth. Um, you might in some images, but in something like this, not quite so much. So that's a quick explanation of these sliders and how they work. And I'm going to do something uh, that most people don't in this case. I'm going to bump the smart radius slider up all the way. And you're going to see the results that I get from that. So that and I really hate that this software that I use for screen recording hinders me with regard to um, some of the things I can do with clicking here. So I apologize for that. But, you know, um, unfortunately, I'm not using Adobe Captivate. I'm using Camtasia. So if you've ever done that before, you know what that's about. Okay, so already, with little effort on our part, this is um, coming out rather nicely. So let's go ahead and trace along our edges here and tell it what we want to do. Okay, so I've unpaused the uh, recording option now and I want you to notice uh, something. You notice the changes to our Uh, model here and what I do want you to take note of is that I haven't changed any of our settings in refine edge over here at all all I did was do some quick uh, brush work on the hair just because um, at the time I started the recording the tool um, due to I think possibly some of the key framing settings you know wasn't picking up the clicks you can see here where I was struggling through it so I didn't want you guys to have to go um, through all of that with me so I just paused it and cleaned it up in that way so um, that's what we've got now um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at this on red because we're going to see um, some other areas we're going to look at a few things that we can do to clean this up better let's look at it on white uh, let's look at it on okay transparency alright not bad 
in truth, I would probably say this is okay and that we could live with this, but let's just take a look at the contrast here. When we bump up the contrast, we can see some interesting things. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull back the shift edge a little bit and then restore the contrast back to... Actually, I'm going to pull it down a little is what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually reduce the contrast by about mm, somewhere between 5 and 10 pixels of what it was. And boom, okay. And I think that I can live with that for... A simple comp all right so let's go ahead and do this as a new layer with a layer mask for our demonstration all right now again it's not a hundred percent perfect it's not going to be but watch what happens when we put it on this background all right so there is some work that can be cleaned up in there and that can be done with the uh, going back into the refine edge tool or what have you but for our purposes this is a really uh, good nice selection for um, a basic composition to present to get our main idea across and the thing is the hair selection is actually really good compared to what it might normally be um, now if you have a Wacom tablet you can actually get in here and refine this really easily and there are some um, things that you can do to clean that up you can get rid of stray hairs um, pretty easily so that is the Photoshop masking tutorial um, I hope you guys enjoyed this one better than the previous tutorial I hope you were able to follow it a little easier by me showing you the whole thing first and then going back into the individual steps and the process. Again, this is not meant to be a perfect um, selection tutorial um, where we use the pen tool, etc. I know that that's the method that a lot of people will advocate and I don't disagree with them, but this is for getting things done quick and fast and in a hurry. So, um, you know, that's it. Um, Again, these tutorials are a lot of uh, work to make. Actually, a lot more work, truthfully, than doing um, some Photoshop work when it all comes down to it. So um, I do appreciate the positive feedback. Um, you know, I appreciate some of the things that I can do to make these things better. And I hope you guys will continue watching, subscribing, sharing, and liking these videos. And if there's a video that you want to see, a tutorial feature or a technique or a tool in Photoshop, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments or message me directly. Again, thanks for watching, and I guess I'll see you guys for the next video.